So this is a, a two rack shelf. This is a piece of uh, aluminum that's going to be the back panel. The front plate is going to easily bolt on there. Here it is. Uh, here's my uh, wonderful uh, one of the rotary pots, but this is um, uh, the one that can't handle AC that I have to now drive with the relay. I got the good Alps uh, volume knob, all these wires if we're going to the crossfader, and here is the input selecting. They actually come to this board. Um, it also has the four LEDs on it to tell you what mode you're in. So this is the input selector switch. Um, this is uh, the power supply, the 24 volt supply. This is where AC comes in. I sent you a, an attached picture of the cable I made with your um, uh, connection. And uh, so here's the uh, board and these modules are the Bryce, copy of the Bryston circuits. Okay, if you look at a Bryston board, they're almost laid out exactly the same. Uh, the switching is done completely differently in a Bryson. They use relays here. Uh, and then they had this wacky 5 volt supply that uh, is for uh, driving the relay coils. All right, this is an operation that's really easy to do wrong, and I managed to do it right. Spotting holes for the standoffs in steel, countersunk, of course. So here it is, held in temporarily with a little clip. Um, I'm going to have to very carefully, very carefully spot the four holes here so the faceplate will bolt onto the chassis. Okay, I'm at a point of, uh, uh, well, stasis, not completion. I'm waiting for parts, namely my large AC transformer and the dual 100K linear pot for the balance. But, and I've there's nothing, well I could run these four, this is the input selector board and the switch. I could run these LEDs from here to here in these pads, but I can do that anytime. I have though can, taken everything out as far as I can go, which is the AC and DC distribution system, and let me explain that. Uh, two transformer system. One is very small, 10 volt vac transformer for this tiny little 5 volt and 12 volt board which is going to have a very tiny load on it and the second one is a much larger uh, amp and a half uh, 56 VAC transformer for the plus and minus 24 volts. I wanted to keep the transformers out of the box. No primary voltage in here. I'm going to keep it a lot quieter. Okay. AC goes into the box here, there's five lines, center tap, and the two ends for the VAC and the two end taps for the 10 volt vac. The 10 volt vac goes straight up here and powers this tiny little 12 volt, 5 volt supply. And that's going to be constantly on as long as this is connected. No big deal. When you turn the power switch on, the switch output is going to enable three relays to connect which is virtually going to turn the DC on the entire system. One, this 5 volts is not only needed for the coils on this relay, but it also needs to be, and the 12 volts, routed into the board. So these two relays are going to enable that. And simultaneously, one leg of the AC, you can see going the red wire going straight from the connector, but the other one, the yellow wire, is being routed into this relay. And when this 5 volt signal allows it, enables it, it will turn the second light leg on for a week. This power supply only half it's been working. A week. Why? One little stinking electrolytic capacitor I had in backwards. I didn't look carefully enough. This one shows the polarity, positive end goes to the adjustment because that's positive voltage. You can't do it that way on the negative one. You have to have the higher potential, which is here, the positive, and this is negative voltage, it's always going to be lower. I had that cap in backwards. One week. Here's the proof. Positive 24. Right here. Positive 24. Right there. Negative 24. 
finally. Okay, this is my last test I'm running before I connect the, uh, the preamp, turn it on. This is taking way too long. It's time to put a fork in this project. What I'm doing now is just running the relays. You'll see all four of them engaged there. I decided to try to use the original relay board. Anyway, what I'm looking for is heat or something melting. I can let it run for a couple hours. I'm sure it'll be fine. I say that because, and why I'm using the original relay board, the load is well under the one amp. Here's my new power supply board, see it? Using the two switching regulators, the top one five, the bottom one twelve that Paul Schreiber turned me on to. And the reason I'm not worried about this relay board, because I measured the current of a dual version and it was coming in at 140 milliamps. Twice that is what, 280 to 300 mils. There's a one amp limit on this guy. And the only other thing is powering is the power on LED. One of these LEDs at a time, depending on what input is selected. And one relay of these, depending on what in input is selected. That's, and a couple of pull-up resistors in the power up delay circuit. That is well within one amp. I, it's ridiculous what I'm so paranoid about. The 12 volt is switching fine. Uh, okay, here goes. If this doesn't work, you're never gonna see this video. This is the first time I'm applying power to the preamp board. The first time I'm turning the preamp on. Uh, let me just check with you guys. Yes, I got ground going to ground. Plus going to plus, negative going to negative. This is the five volt relay, two wires, 12 volt relay, two wires. Okay, but we should see, oh boy, am I nervous. When I turn that power switch on, is some sort of delay before that light goes on. Let's see here. Oh man. Whoa, oh, cool. I, I heard the relay click. It's on. Oh, look. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. No, 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 that's right. Okay, I, I remember I offset that pot that way. The knob. Oh, fuck, look at that. Awesome. Right, let me see if I can hear the relays going. Yeah, I can hear these relays engaging, corresponding with the uh, selection there. Now I can tie these wires up. Wait a minute, can I? Yeah, I can tie these wires up now. See, I've had these, these t zip ties loose, and it looks like crap, and now I can tie them up. I'm not going to move it over yet to the studio and do audio tests, uh, only because that's the, one of the transformers is out in the open. That will fall off something, and it will short, and I'll have more problems than I know what to do with. I currently have a smaller 12 volt transfer. It's not going to work with this new regulator. And I have a new box coming. It might be downstairs, and I have to remake this thing. It's two transformers this size that will never fit, never fit in that little box. But uh, what could be wrong now? I could have a miswire, a misinserted part here. I, I really doubt it. I've tested, I've checked these, and these are just wires connecting the IOs. The hard part, the part could really go wrong. It's not going wrong. Holy crap, how long has this been? It's seven, maybe six, but it's been quite a long while. Ah, it's a relief. Eureka. Okay, um, the preamp works. I'm doing my first series of audio tests. Um, there's some issues, nothing serious, I get into that. I haven't listened to it yet, don't need to. I'm just watching it uh, right now. Uh, have a problem with my balance pot that I added. Let me show you. I'll turn on a sine wave. Um, that's distorting a little bit from the source. Okay, so my balance is at 50%. The amplitude's what? 1.88 volts peak to peak. Look what happens when I throw the output to all of one side. That's crap. Okay. That's uh, too much difference. It goes to 
volts peak to peak. So yeah, I'm getting 10% the output when it's the mid middle. I thought you needed an audio, I mean a linear pot for this, but uh, I got a linear pot. Now I did cheat a little bit. I put 35K on each leg. I kind of cheat the taper, but I think I went overboard. Uh, let's say these are the numbers of the on the guitar volume pedal, one through 10 or knob. Yeah, I started off 7.6, that's a quarter turn, I'm at 440 already, I cut amplitude in half, halfway up, I'm at 1.2, and then it kind of flattens up, look at that. Bottom half doesn't, only goes down a half a volt as a, compared to six volts on the other end. So um, yeah, I got a taper problem here. But you know, I've got output out of both sides, even the balance works. Kind of cool. Anyway, there we go. Okay, the system is installed. It's completed. I had a ground hum problem that I completely caused myself. As soon as I heard it, I realized what I had done. Uh, if you remember, all the I.O. jacks were in a line in the back, and I went ahead and ran a bus wire connecting the grounds to all of them. Well, I also had twisted pairs of all the jacks to the main board. There's two past the ground, actually many past the ground, and it was causing a 60 cycle hum, which when I cut the bus wire, eliminated it, and it's silent. Um, so let me just show you what's going on here. This uh, power switch turns on power to the wall wart, which is in the back, which immediately applies power to a five volt supply that's sitting back here and waiting for the power switch to come on, which is gonna route AC to the 24 volt supply, which will turn in, in, in turn, turn the power in the system on. It will also apply the uh, five and 12 volt uh, relay coil power on. So let me do that. Let me uh, turn power on. Okay, it's in. Uh, let me turn this down a little bit and get some music going. Sounds great. I corrected the problem I had initially with the balance spot that I had. This was a lot of work. It was made longer by some stupid errors that I made along the way. Uh, it didn't help that the 24 volt supply that I bought from the eBay source wasn't working for me and I didn't feel like troubleshooting it. So I just made my own supply and the just the many rotary switches I went through until I found ones that I like the feel of. So it's done, I'm glad I did it and I'm really glad it's done. Now I can get to work.